Hello again YouTube. Uh, this might be my first video of 2020, not 100% sure, but certainly the first one I've done in at least 6 months. There was a reason for that. Earlier in the year uh, I wasn't well, I had contracted Covid-19. And before I contracted Covid I had asthma. Um, now like many people who have asthma, I uh, carry about one of these, uh, it's a reliever inhaler. And uh, that helps me to breathe when I'm struggling. You might uh, have previously, if you've listened to my videos, you might have noticed that quite often my breathing gets quite heavy, especially when I'm recording something on camera. And that's something I can't control. It's something that's just a symptom of having asthma. Now, over the last six months, I've been recovering reasonably slowly. I've had breathing difficulty all the way throughout. And uh, I've been using this uh, type of inhaler, another type of inhaler, and some tablets to try and help at one point recently everything got overwhelming and I had a, a burning sensation in my, my lungs and my throat and I think it was over medication. Um, one of the issues with this type of medication, this works quite well when you, you basically inhale this and it reduces the inflammation in your lungs which helps to uh, your lungs to take in more oxygen. But in order to do that you press a button it puts out a puff of medicine. So if we have a look at the little canister in here, it's a little aerosol. It'll tell you on the back. Also contains a CFC free propellant, HFA 134A. Now, I can tell you from experience that under normal conditions that doesn't make any difference. But if your lungs are irritated, especially if they're the way mine were, they were uh, they felt hot and they, you know if you can imagine if you had sunburn it felt like that but on the inside of my lungs so spraying a, a propellant into it doesn't really help it might help with the short term with the, the tightness of breathing but it certainly wasn't helping with the irritation so to try and help and to alleviate that symptom i bought one of these from amazon this is a what's called a mesh nebulizer and it's just a little, uh, it's a little uh, device that it's got a mouthpiece on it. It's got a tank on the top here, and it's got a battery section on the bottom. And what you do is you use these things. So these are ventilin nebules. You can see here it says for inhalation only. So what you do is you break the top off. You put the liquid in this tank, close it up. Press the button on the front and you breathe through the mouthpiece. And this produces a nice stream of uh, aerosolized liquid. So it aerosolizes the medicine without using the propellant. It uses the batteries and this little piezo disc here to propel the medicine. And I'll just uh, I'll use some water and show you how that works. Let's just power up here. Check the batteries are the right way round. There we go. I've got some just plain tap water here and I'll just put a little bit in, just enough to show you how it works. So I've now got that in there, if I put the mouthpiece on, you'll see that it produces a, a stream of mist. And the stream is actually quite cooling. I can feel it cool on my hand. So when you inhale that, um, apart from delivering the medicine and not having a propellant, it also has a cooling effect. So it'll cool your throat and cool your lungs as you inhale it. And it really helped. This was probably uh, one of the things that helped the most when I was at my worst. So now that I'm over that, I've recovered past that stage. I don't. I no longer need this. Um, I can go back to just using these because I'm, I'm at work anyway. This is, it's okay. It's okay to try to keep in the van, but it's not exactly pocket sized. Um, so I've gone back to using these because I no longer have the irritation. So I'm gonna have a quick look inside this. Uh, I'm gonna show you how it works. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward device. It's they're now being um, marketed on Amazon and eBay as a fogger, 
so uh, they've got a slightly different piece on the front they don't have mouthpiece but it's a similar design so if you imagine say I wanted to disinfect this screwdriver I would spray a fog over it and uh, that would cover it in either alcohol or your favourite disinfectant and you can maybe see that there's a very fine coating across it you see that's on my my bench there so it, it does it does work really well to create a, a fog of moisture let's just see if we get that to yeah you can see that's got it's got a coating of moisture so it it works well it's, a, it's exactly the same device as this this one's designed for inhaling and the other ones are designed for for coating uh, surfaces in a disinfectant so let me just uh, take the water back out of this and then we'll have a look and see what's inside. Okay, so it comes in a couple of parts. That's the mouthpiece. We don't need to look at that. It's just a piece of rubber. The top half comes off. We press this button here. There's a little latch. There we are, and that comes off. So this part contains the tank where you put the liquid, but it also contains this here, which is the, the disc which actually makes the mist. And uh, I'll show you that in a second. So this part has got the battery, uh, the battery section in the bottom. I've got a couple of any loops. It has on the back a little jack plug a jack socket rather and you can plug in a 5 volt source so it comes with a lead that goes from USB to this little jack and you can use a power bank or a USB charger for that on the front it's got the on off button and we've got two status indicators one is green and shows you the units running and the other one is red which basically means there's a problem and if I show you this now if I try and turn it on it will go green to say it's running and then it just switches off um, the red light I believe comes on whenever it detects the tanks empty or the batteries low okay so let's uh, saw a couple of screws there let's have a look okay is that now, I have had a quick look inside this already, so I, I know what's in here. And if you've ever had a fire, an electric fire, that produces fake smoke, then it likely uses the same type of device as this. The, it uses a piezo piezo electric disc and it basically turns that water into a very fine mist so it looks apart from working as a fogger it also uh, also does work very well to create that fake smoke effect or if you had a, a steam train you know, a toy train that produced a fake smoke then again it probably used one of these to do so so the back case has just got the little hole for the jack and it's got the latch that holds the water tank on. This middle section has the batteries and also has the circuit board. And on the front section we've got the button, so we've got the rubber membrane for the button. And then we've got the contacts under here. So there's three contacts here. And these are all sprung contacts. Just going to show you that. So we've got two little tiny little spring contacts here they connect to the piezo disc and there's a bigger spring contact here and that connects to the tank uh, sensor so that it detects whether there's liquid in the tank or not on the, the board now I won't take the board off because there's nothing on the back of it there's nothing to see there the board, when I opened this up at first, I thought, oh, there's more on there than I expected. Effectively, the bottom half of the board from here down, this all deals with the incoming power. 
So if we look at where the battery comes in, you've got positive and negative come from the battery. But where the jack goes, the negatives are commoned up, and then there's a neg uh, sorry a positive from the jack. They come over to the board here, and the negatives are commoned over to here. You've got the 3 volt input from the battery on this side and the 5 volt input from the jack on this side. Both of these feed up through an inductor, through some capacitors and into this little chip here. This chip here is effectively, it's the same as a power bank chip. Uh, I've looked it up and it basically will take these voltages, the 3 volts or the 5 volts and it will normalise it. It will use a uses pulse width modulation to output a steady voltage to the rest of the, the board here. The rest of the board, there's not a great deal on it. We've got a, a capacitor which is likely smoothing the voltage coming off that chip. We've got a button that turns it on and off. And then we've got this little chip here. And this little chip is controlling the rest of the, the circuit. So this chip will be detecting when this button's pressed to, to switch it on and off. It'll also be driving these little transistors and they'll drive the piezo disc. Um, on the top of the board here, we've got three connections. We've got one for water, and then we've got the positive and the negative for the piezo disc. The water connection goes with it, basically comes back here through a capacitor and a couple of resistors, and it goes to this a pin on this chip. I believe what it's doing, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it's using capacitive coupling to detect whether there's water present. Um, it could also be using a resistive coupling back to back through the, the supply for the piezo, but I don't think that's the case because that there would be too much noise on there for it to work properly. So I believe this is just using that capacitive coupling to determine if there's water there or not. And then these two are driving the piezo, and that's essentially it. The way a piezo works, just in case you're not aware, it's, a, it's a, a disc or a flat piece of metal and it's got ceramic on one side. When you when there's no voltage on it, it's in its resting state. When you apply voltage to it, it goes to a second state. So it'll go from this to this. And we use piezos as speakers. So they work as, the same way as a conventional speaker. When you apply a voltage, they'll flex. Um, in this case, we want it to make, a, to make water into tiny droplets. So we're basically flexing it hundreds of times a second or hundreds of times a minute to uh, to basically propel that water out and if i show you the other part of the actual disc itself so this part i haven't had off but i know what to expect i know what's inside it So we have this uh, silicon rubber ring here and that's just to stop the water getting from the tank past the piezo without actually going through the piezo. I'm not sure if the camera will pick this up but in the middle of that disc where it's raised there are thousands of tiny little holes. Those little holes are where the, the moisture comes through and get turned from a liquid into tiny little droplets of, of liquid. So if I pop this out As you can see on the back, there's a few drops of liquid left. Let's uh, take the rubber ring off. There we are. So the piezo disc's got effectively three layers. So you've got the, the layer on the back, which is the main layer. There's then a... Get it to focus. There's then a ceramic layer. And then there's the top layer. So underneath here, you see there's a second connection here. There's a layer of metal on that. And when you apply voltage across those two pieces of metal, across the ceramic, it causes the plate at the back to distort. So this is likely in its raised position. So if I applied voltage to that right now, it would probably come back flat. It would come closer to the camera. The connections here, so you've got three matching connections to match up with these these connections on the front here. The two connections here at the bottom 
These are where they connect to the piezo itself, the positive and negative. This connection here, the big connection, that was the one that said water, it just comes through to a pin and it goes nowhere. So that's why I believe it's using capacitive coupling to detect the presence of water. Like I said, the, the disc actually does sit right up against it, so it could well be using the resistive method. It could be reading the resistance between this pin and the main disc. Um, let's see which... Yeah, so the main, the back end of the disc is the ground, is the zero volt. So it could be doing that. It could be using uh, a resistive read to tell whether there's water there or not. Now, when I bought the unit, it did say it won't work with distilled water, and that explains why. Um, because distilled water wouldn't conduct, so it wouldn't be able to tell if distilled water was there or not. And the problem with running this without any water is if you run it dry, it heats up. And when you heat up a piezo disc, the piezo material forms a new shape and effectively it stops working. Because whatever shape it's in, when you heat up, that becomes its new norm. So it would stop propelling the water. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's how it works. So we've got the tank the control board and the batteries and that that's pretty much us. Like I say, this was very useful to me. I'm going to put it back together um, because I may need it again in the future. You never know. And even if I don't, I could use it as a, a disinfectant fogger. So I could use it to uh, to fog my keyboard at work or fog my tools when I'm out on the road. Uh, it's a, a very useful little device. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.